His knees hit the cold stone floor with a painful thump as he bent his head submissively to the high priest, Cain. As he listened, a light shone harshly through the stained glass windows, illuminating the figure before him. True greatness comes from a purity of soul, mind, and body, the priest began, as he had many times before. Those with impurity of body and soul must therefore work three times as hard as their kinsmen to please the gods. Eld bowed his head further in agreement, his neck aching slightly, but it was nothing he wasn't used to. The purification which the high priest alluded to involved rigorous methods designed to elevate the impure, and therefore preventing the decline of the village as a whole. Once completed, it wouldn't matter if Eld was the offspring of a human female and a now outcast elven noble. He would become an accepted member of the village, no longer shunned for his heritage. He would be loved. His purification had been going on for 15 years. As the high priest finished the final rite of the day, he lifted an intricate bowl of gilded silver from the altar and carried it over to Eld. A sickly red liquid swished back and forth inside it. Eld took the bowl with both hands and drank slowly as the high priest traced the church's symbol in the air, an infinity with an X shape through the center. The drink had no distinct taste, but ran like liquid fire down his throat. It had cleansing properties, burning away the impurities inside his body. Most often, it left him nauseous and gave him cramps in his lower abdomen. He finished it all, though, and placed the empty bowl before him, bowing his head. Stand, Eld, said the high priest. Eld felt a hand placed on his arm, guiding him gently up to his feet. He kept his gaze averted downward. You have achieved a decade and a half of repentance and purification. This is no small feat, but you must remain strong, for there is still further to go. Eld felt his heart sink. Each year, the high priest had spoken similar words, always a great achievement, but never enough to meet the required level of purity. He nodded numbly as the high priest assured him it wouldn't be much longer, and of course, he would be there every step of the way. We'll begin the renewal first thing in the morning, then, the high priest said, and beckoned for Eld's usual escorts to guide him back to his chambers. He bowed and allowed himself to be taken roughly by the arms. Unlike High Priest Cain, they made little effort to veil their distaste for his existence. The pupils in their hazel eyes swallowed all warmth from the air. They brought him through the stone archway to the dark depths beneath the church. Shoved into the chamber, Eld stumbled and fell to the rough, hay-strewn floor. The steel door clanged shut behind him, the key turning heavily in the lock. In a few moments, he was alone. He got up stiffly, shuffled to the cot, little more than a wooden board and cloth stuffed with sharp hay. The burning sensation in his throat subsided, but soon the elixir would begin working against his insides, tearing away at the impurities. He collapsed on his side, staring at the black metal of the room's entrance. His shoulder blades ached, lacerated and bruised, from earlier that morning. His blistered hands stung to the touch, with small cuts open across the palm. He blew softly to cool them, feeling only slight relief. He wished he could numb the pain. Hanging on the bedpost was a mirror, little more than a shard of glass, that he often used to groom himself before meeting the high priest. He reached for it tenderly and looked at his face. His hair was a light chestnut, like his mother's. His father's hazel, elven eyes stared back at him. His ears weren't round, but neither were they sharp, like those of the sun elves around him. He grimaced, High Priest Cain's words echoing in the back of his mind. Those with tainted heritage must redeem themselves in the view of the gods. They must repent for their sin of blood. The purity of the village must be maintained. 
Eld had heard the words, but as shown by today's ultimate ritual, marking an end of the cycle, his efforts would never be enough. He grit his teeth, a pang of anguish welling up inside him, his human half acting out again. He had done much to suppress that side of him in his younger years, but now, at the age of thirty, he faced the despair, the futility. He gave into it, silently, so as not to alert the guards. He raged inside his mind, slamming his fists into the bedding. The tears that ran down his face stung the nicks and scratches along his cheeks. After a few moments, he settled down again, tear stains on his face. His stomach churned, his abdomen beginning to cramp. The pain would stay there until the next morning, which showed no signs of appearing soon. No light shone from under the door, and the barred window only let cold starlight through. He cursed his existence. If only he had been born pure. <laughs> what a ridiculous notion. Eld started and turned to look, but there was only a stone brick wall. The man uses purity as an excuse for authority over you. Just because you have human heritage doesn't make you any less pure. It doesn't make you any less worthy. A strange sensation crept over Eld's heart. Static buzzed lowly in his ears, but the voice remained clear. What gives him the right to dictate who you should be? He rambles blindly about those silly gods, speaking for them with no notion of what it's all really about. He and his followers have abandoned the ways of their ancestors, the freedom their people always had. It makes me sick. The static was growing. Eld shivered again, and noticed the cold breeze that blew in from the window. If you want to be worthy, you have to prove yourself. This much is true. But purity of blood is not the only path forward. Your heritage is only part of your power. Eld exhaled slowly, his breath crystallizing in the air. The feminine voice spoke as if it were getting closer to him, and it whispered some more. You don't have to put up with those fools any longer. Their inane rituals, the sermons, that high priest waving redemption in front of you like a carrot on a stick. Eld's heart pounded in his chest, his temples ached, but slowly he felt himself agreeing with the voice. I can give you real strength. It promised. Out of the darkness something began to take shape. It shone with an icy blue light. A six-pointed snowflake twinkling in the starlight and as big as the mirror in his hand. A hand which now bled steadily from clutching the sharp glass. The power to claim your own worth. The static roared in his ears. His body shook in the cold, the breeze turning into what seemed like a gale. You just need to reach out and take it. Eld lifted his hand, but he felt the voice as though its owner were shaking its head, chastising him. Your other hand. He looked down and saw the red stain that had spread across the cot. He saw his hand dripping with blood, clutching the fragment. He dropped it and raised his fingertips to the snowflake. He was shivering violently now. His fingers closed around it, and the light shone through them. It numbed his hand. The pain began disappearing. His body throbbed coldly, and a wave of pins and needles rode up his arm, his skin changing from tan to pale. The wave rolled over his body. The light in his hand never dimmed, but when he opened it, the crystal had been replaced with a crackling blue energy. His nausea long since passed, Eld sat up, staring at his hand. Motes of darkness danced around the edges of his vision. He looked up, slowly, towards the door. Show them what they've turned you into. He pointed his hand and pushed. He woke up to the howling of wind. He squinted his eyes and blinked. The sky was a mix of purple and blue, the sun just below the horizon, but getting brighter. Twilight before the dawn. He was standing in a shadowy, snow-covered field, dotted with small mounds of stone. 
The trees around him had leaves covered in frost, some frozen completely. They rattled as a gust of wind played with the branches. As he looked closer, he saw something glinting in the snow. He trudged slowly towards it, barely registering that he felt no cold from the wind. He bent down and lifted up a large piece of stained glass that lay among the pile of frozen rubble. A crack ran through a familiar crest. He tilted the glass so that it reflected his face. Icy blue eyes shone back at him, a pale face framed by silvery white hair. A faint blue glow seemed to emanate from it, and over his shoulder, the glimpse of a shadow with a toothy grin. He dropped the pane in the snow and looked around him, his surroundings becoming clear with familiarity. His breath caught in his chest as he realized what had happened. Something bumped against his consciousness, and a faint static hummed in his ears again. Beautiful, isn't it? The voice echoed. The sun broke over the mountaintops, streaming sunlight across the field. Snow raced across frozen dunes, icicles casting rainbows upon them. Vague shadows like hexagonal snowflakes dappled the ground in patterns. As he gazed at them, and then over at the frozen ruins, Eld felt a tide of calm wash over him. Calm, and something he hadn't felt in an age. The spark of freedom in his heart. A blue arc of eldritch energy coursed across his palms. The voice spoke to him, amusement creeping into it. Oh yes, this is going to be fun. 